Hi you guys, starting a video with Hedia, who I've mentioned, and I want to start by praying and thanking the Lord. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We praise you. You are so awesome. You are so worthy to be praised. You are amazing. We thank you for all the transformations that you do in people's lives. You save people, you rescue people, you redeem people, you deliver people. Your, your hand is miraculous. Your hand is not too short to save. So we praise you, we put you way up high, we honor you, we glorify you, and I thank you for this opportunity to interview Hedia right now. Yes. And so, meet Hedia. She is the founder of Resurrect Ministries, and you guys, if, you, uh, if we're not loud enough or anything, leave a comment so that we know if this is working out well. So I want to start by mentioning how the United States churches, we, we can be really spoiled. And I think one of the ways to not be so spoiled is when one part of the body hurts to surround that part of the body. And that would be, that would be like the persecuted Christians, you guys. So like when we hurt with them, when we realize their families are torn apart, when we realize kids are sold into sex trafficking and there's just agony, when we realize what's happening, we're not going to be so spoiled. We're going to get out of ourselves and we're going to be praying for them. And then another thing I think the body of Christ needs in the United States is to celebrate testimonies and when God does amazing things to lift it up. And right now in Iran, we have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There are so many people that are turning to Jesus, also in China. And so that leads me to Hedia and how I met her online. And she has an amazing story. So keep her in prayer. Um, if you want to have her speak at any of the churches, if you have any ideas, keep her in prayer and you're going to be blown away by this, by this testimony. So I'm honored to introduce Hedia to you and hi everyone. Yay. So I'm going to ask her some questions. She worked for the FBI for a little while and I'm going to start by asking you, what were your religious beliefs when you were growing up? I was raised in a secular um, family. They were Muslim by name, but uh, they came from Iran in the 60s before the revolution. But uh, we didn't grow up with religion. We grew up with Iranian culture, but not with religion. So it wasn't until I was in college and I had gone through a somewhat fast and furious lifestyle. <laughs> and I realized that I was just empty and I needed a place for God. And I ended up in Islam because it was the most natural fit culturally. And I ended up a practicing Muslim for about 22 years. I was very, very devout. I prayed, I fasted, I wore Islamic, traditional Islamic clothes. And it, was, um, it wasn't until Christ uh, that my life was transformed. Okay. And what school did you go to? I went to UCLA undergrad and USC for law school. Okay. Can you guys see everything okay? Can you hear it okay? Let us know if it's not loud enough. Okay, so you told me about a couple different instances with um, the mosques and stuff like that. And you mentioned how you didn't know if you were going to be saved even. So yeah. talk about that part again. So, so I, in, in all of this fervor of practice of Islam, I kept asking clerics, hey, so I just need to know that all the stuff that I've done before, I'm, I'm forgiven, right? Like, yeah. I'm going to paradise. Yeah. And they're like, well, we can't say that for sure. They would say, inshallah, like, God willing. And I was like, no, I need to know <laughs> for sure. And it was, it broke my heart yeah. that no matter what I did, nobody in Islam could promise me salvation. Wow. And so it was very uh, disillusioning. And I felt, you know, then why am I doing all this? Yeah. And I just, I just left. All right. Well, I know you've had an exciting life because it's like a TV show. You were you worked in the government, anti-terrorism. Yes. Yeah, so it, I was a federal contractor. It meant I went where they sent me, okay. and I did what they asked of me. So I got to serve in our embassy in Afghanistan. Wow. I was at a couple of DC, you know, prominent DC think tanks, and I traveled the world doing reports on what indoctrinates Muslims towards extremism and towards violence. And then in the United States, I developed the first evidence-based um, terrorism prevention program. Wow. And that's when I uh, went off to the FBI. Exciting. So that's some impressive history and credentials. So now how did Christ reveal himself to you? So 
Uh, when I left DC, I moved back to California, and that's when um, I basically left the the Islamic practices that I was involved in, and I got myself into another. I was I was working um, as a business developer for a political commentator, uh, and it was everything was going great until it wasn't, and I found myself in the middle of a lawsuit and controversy, and I was broken. I was just, I describe it as like being Raggedy Ann on a floor because none of my tactics, none of my expertise, nothing could get me out of this situation. Wow. I mean, even to the point where my attorney at $750 an hour was like, listen, you better fasten your seatbelt because I don't know how long this is going to take. And I just ended up on the floor, face down, crying to God to reveal himself to me because I knew only God can save me. And it was at that prayer that I heard the voice of Christ clearly say, Hedia, it's me. Wow. Yeah. That is so awesome. Okay, so how long has that been? So that's been about two years. So even once I heard the voice of Christ, I was petrified. So okay. I was like, oh my God. I mean, I went to um, a therapist and I was like, wait a minute. Christ, Jesus showed up. And yes. she's like, wait, okay, so that doesn't mean you have to accept Christ. And I was like, no, 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 I think he's calling me. I, I think I have to go. Yeah. And so I walked that out, and I was just so conflicted, but I knew wow. I was being drawn. I knew he was wow. calling me. Wow. And I was listening to um, this pastor, and he was saying, you know, your car should be your prayer closet everywhere you go. Jesus is with you. Feel the Holy Spirit. And so I literally felt the spirit of Jesus next to me. Wow. Put his hand on my hand and say, my daughter, you don't have to be afraid anymore. Oh my God. And uh, that was it. I'm bawling. I pull over and wow. I, I go and I get baptized. And so now I'm just uh, thank you, Lord. Jesus 24 seven. Thank yes. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so that you guys, is everybody, can you guys hear it? Okay. All good. All thank good. you. Thank, thank you thank for you. saying that. <laughs> okay. So that leads me to a Bible verse that I've really, that I really love. Second Peter one ten give you some context in it. Second uh, Peter's talking about a letter to the dispersed. So these are Christians that are walking around homeless even. And he's saying, you're called, you're elected. And he says, you're no longer your old self. And don't find it strange that if you're going through troubling persecutions, because people that you used to drink with and people that you used to party with, they look at you oddly now. And so Peter says in second Peter 1 10, Therefore, brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure, for if you practice these things, you will never stumble. So I like to look at that verse as like the day that Jesus spoke to you. You know what I mean? So you have assurance right there. That's going to be your, you're going to have to hold, you're going to hold that, you know, going through some spiritual stuff. Now you mentioned a few churches you went to where the Holy Spirit urges you to get out of there. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It's been a wild ride. Yeah. Church, just if, in case people haven't experienced church in LA, it's an amazing thing, uh, <laughs> in, both in a good sense and a bad sense. So I went to one church where I was just, I could swear I smelled marijuana. And I was convinced they were smoking pot in the church. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, and so I, as I was walking through, I mean, so loud, I can hear the Holy Spirit say, get out. Nice. And so I just, you know, I just got to get out. And so I left. Yeah. Uh, and I've had another experience at church that originally felt like home, but, and I, and I know people say that, you know, Muslims, when they come to Christ, sometimes we're a little bit extreme, but that needless to say, um, I know that drinking is not prohibited in Christianity, but drunkenness is. Yeah. And so there was this one church where I felt like drinking and that partying kind of lifestyle was still very much at its core. So Jesus and as so, an accessory is what you were saying. Jesus as an accessory. It felt like Jesus was an accessory. And then I felt that the Holy Spirit had me in this conversation like, well, is this the kind of walk you want? Mm. Or do you want to be immersed in Christ and pick up your cross and follow him and run your race? Wow. And so Wow. I, I want to run my race. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I'm okay. now at Calvary in Chino Hills with Pastor Jack Hibbs. I love Jack Hibbs. Yes. I've watched some of his stuff. Yes. I watched some of the other guys' stuff. Um, so I, I don't want to forget to ask you, are you reading the Word? Are you in the Bible a lot? Because I believe that we're dying from a lack of reading the Word. We're, are, how, are you, how are you staying in the Word? Uh, I was blessed to have mentors um, from the very beginning tell me the importance of reading the Bible. And I've had such amazing experiences because it's 
as we know, the living word of God, and it speaks to me, and I and I hear God comparing verses of the Quran that I know wow. even to the Bible as I read it. So it's been glorious. I read it directly, but I also have a software, Logos.com, some nice. people know about it, um, where it provides Bible commentary. You can do passage studies, word yes. studies. It has the Ar um, the Hebrew, the Latin, yeah. and the Greek. and and I use that, wow. and I also um, have mentors that I'm just that nice. are discipling me. Nice. I can tell you're on fire from how little I've. <laughs> I mean, I do. Yeah. I'm like the woman at the well. I'm yes. just like screaming, Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, like, yes. You know, I don't know much. I'm not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> yeah, but you're but, hungry. But I'm hungry. You're and hungry. I'm on fire, so oh man, I love it. They always be that way. That's so awesome. Like, there's yes. this other girl that I follow online, and she's like a year or two into it, but she's so on fire. It's so attractive because you can see how much she loves Jesus. And I get more out of her sometimes than I do um, Jacob Prash, who I think is one of the best guys to really open up the Bible. I like David Jeremiah's books and uh, David Hawking is one of my favorites, but that early faith is so attractive. It's like, what do they have? I want what they have. So, so I want to bless you that I can see that in you. And so now another serious question. So do you feel like since God turned you from Islam in a remarkable way that he's calling you out in faith in a specific way? Like, do you feel a calling on your life? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I originally, when I first came into the faith, I was still really broken. And so I knew there was a lot of internal healing that needed to happen. And so I just locked myself up in the house with the Bible and YouTube, yeah. watching sermons, the five sermons a day you know, using the software, reading the word. And then at some point, and then I was just volunteering at local churches. Nice. And then he just spoke to me and it was loud like thunder saying, mm. I need you to go and spread your, the word and your testimony. Nice. And you know, blood of the lamb, word of your testimony. That's how we overcome. And, yeah. and I have found so much healing and freedom uh, in doing that. So I started Resurrect Ministry. It's resurrectministry.com. Nice. And I tell people it's for the uh, princess in Dubai walled up in a palace or a housewife in Encino. It's oh, wow. just a way to develop. It's a portal to developing a personal relationship with Christ. Wow. He'll wow. meet you where you are. Yes. I do a lot of online stuff myself and I've seen um, another Iranian woman say that she wanted out of, you know, the Islamic stranglehold they had her in in, in Iran. And then she became kind of new age and, online. And then she found Jesus through a couple really strong videos. So videos are a great portal to reach yes. people. And these are countries that don't have churches. They don't have physical yeah. buildings. Yeah. So it's important. And of course, though Satan uses the internet, Jesus is going to use it for the kingdom. Absolutely. And you guys, I am inspired because I have seen um, things on Facebook where a guy was supposedly lit on fire and he would not burn in Iraq. And I'm like, is this real? It looked real. I checked it out and I'm going to believe it's real. And then I saw other things that were like, wow, uh, ISIS guy has a dream and now he's following Jesus. So we see all this, but you guys, I want to validate that this is happening because Chris Dyer, who is a missionary at Capitol Beach Church, he, he goes um, and he comes back with these kinds of stories himself. Um, I'm going to hopefully go to uh, either Iraq or Syria. And they just spoke, uh, Patrick Moy, and they are bringing back these same stories. They are happening. This is a move of the Holy Spirit in the times we're in right now. And so I believe that her ministry is so needed for people to be able to connect online and share their testimony. So you've already mentioned God spoke to you, Jesus spoke to you, Hedia, it's me, and, other, and these other urgings. How else do you feel he's reaching you? Is it through the audible? The other urgings, your spirit. Do you have like a Holy Spirit voice now that's stronger? Um, pastor messages. Give us yeah. some more on your. <laughs> well, uh, there we have an inside joke amongst former Muslims where we say that it's so hard to bring a Muslim to Christ that he has to perform miracles. So <laughs> I am blessed to experience these miracles. Yeah. But now it's I the Holy Spirit voice in me, I, I believe is strong. Mm. It's really, really strong yes. in the sense that when, especially when he doesn't want me to do something, yes. I mean, it convicts me and it puts me on my knees and I start crying. I'm like, okay, 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 I'll fix it, I'll fix it. Yes. Uh, sometimes it's much more subtle. Yes. Uh, but I usually, if it's dramatic, I'll ask for a confirmation. And so I try to get the confirmation either through the word or through sermons. And I'll sometimes get multiple confirmations. And sometimes 
you know, send me somewhere that is entirely random, and when I wow. get there, instantly it's clear. All Just right. to confirm for me, you heard me, you yes. listened, yes. And, and you did, and this is the proof. Well, this is an I awesome step of faith, because I had to talk her into this, you guys. She was a little, yes. I'm like, no, you're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is, have you considered writing books so other people can, that were raised um, in Islam can see your story? Yes. Absolutely. I, I've done a lot of writing right now. I'm struggling with procrastination and distraction and all yeah. these other things. But yeah. I eventually pray for me. I will get it out. And it's it's basically trying to do a how to guide on how to experience that transformation. And again, from a lay person, I'm not yeah. going to pretend to be a yeah, scholar. Right, right, right. It's basically just taking scripture that has um, enriched me and touched me that I feel may be helpful to other women that have struggled through similar issues coming out of Islam in particular. Yeah. Because there's so many things that we can hold on to. There's a reverence for Jesus. Yes. So that, the, that foundation is really good to build on. So right. everybody knows right. Muslims love Jesus. Now they don't understand his reality. They yes. don't understand he yes. was the son of God. Yes. Or that he was God incarnate. Right. But they have a reverence. So you have right. an open door and they believe he's coming back. Yes. So the second yes. coming of Christ, they believe in the second coming. Right. So you say, well, then what's this problem in the in between? Yeah. And that he's immaculately concepted, that it was a virgin birth. Okay. So, they got so a lot of it. you've got a great foundation to be like, right. listen, he died on the cross yes. to save you. Yes. Why do you want to wait till the last days? Except yes. Except now. Yes. So I, right. I hope to articulate that in, in wow. a way that could help others. Wow. Thank you for help, helping me understand it more, too. So your website, do you see it as a portal? Because I, I like my spirit cries sometimes because I know people are committing suicide who just are too scared to testify and say what they're going through. That's why I think testimony is so powerful, because when somebody else hears, oh, my gosh, I've struggled with that. And Jesus rescued me from that. And in the beginning, it was really scary to take these steps. But now there's a new freedom. So do you see your website could be a portal for some of that for for even people in the United States that aren't? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm hoping I've combined all the resources for a uh, the beginnings of a good prayer life. I have worship uh, music on there. I have Bible resources. I have pastors and churches mm. um, so that people can find resources in their walk and, and, and get and get strong and find even an online church if they yeah. don't have a local church right, to right. participate in. But I'm hoping for it to become interactive. And okay. so I also have a small group called The Lost Coin, um, after the story in Luke of the mm -hmm. woman who was so happy to find this lost coin that we'd like to describe the, the Muslims that are going to come to Christ as that lost coin. And I'm hoping they're going to help me reach out to people as well so that people from whatever country, whether they're Arab speakers, we have girls, ladies from Somalia, we have Iranians. So whether Farsi speaking, Somali speaking, wow. Arab speaking, that we'd be able to be a resource for them in their walk. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to read to you guys Revelation 12, 11. It's a very serious verse, but I love it. It says, They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. So that's showing us the victory is in testifying who Jesus is. The, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, meaning the whole Bible points to him, and then what he's done in your life. It frees you from any fear of man and we see that they didn't shy away even from death because they love to follow him more we see how uh, the disciples all followed him to a torturous death except for John so we see that once you taste Jesus you don't want you don't want to you know you don't want to trade that in for the world and so now I'm going to tie this up into how God is still doing the miraculous we see it every day and We need to give these people platforms. So do you have any other visions for from God at this point to help other people hear about Christ and find out that there is that there is one who died for their sins? Well, I like many others, I believe there is a very strong revival and it's happening now. Mm. There's a move of the Holy Spirit Absolutely. all over the Middle East. It's there it's just a bastion of suffering. And I think as I as I mentioned, there is an open heart, I think, to hear the message. Yeah. It's just um the Lord has told me, go back and get my sons and daughters. Oh wow. Uh so I have a strong urging to do this and I know there's many, many others like me that are motivated in such a way and so we hope that we will make 
um, these resources available and that they will see the love and the salvation that comes from Christ. Okay. You guys, I pray, like in the morning I pray, and I don't want to tell you how to Come pray. On. I don't want to tell you guys how, I, how to pray or anything, but God's word says that he never slumbers on Israel in the Psalms and in Ezekiel. He says he's always watching his borders. So I always pray for the borders from the Euphrates on, but I always have like, I, I, I hurt for Iran. I hurt for, I hurt for them because it just, I just want them all to know Christ. So I pray for Iran. I pray for Russia. I pray for all them. So you guys pray for, yes. for those people because we don't want to see any, we don't want to see anybody, you know, not have salvation. So yes. you guys pray for Hedia, bless her with yes, a lot of good please. comments, um, encourage her. I'm encouraging other people to take steps of faith in their testimonies, take steps of faith to write books. Um, it really just takes that one first step. Yes. And then you take the next one, you take the next one. Like you said, the Holy Spirit just keeps urging you and it's like a new victory. <laughs> I can't, I can't give up it's, a, it's a new freedom. <laughs> and then you start realizing, wow, there's people that need to know, you know, what right. I'm finding. Yes. And so God bless Praise you guys. God. Thank you guys. And God bless Hedia and pl please, please pray for her and encourage please. her. And, um, we love you. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. Have a blessed day, you guys. Thanks. I hope you were in it enough. <laughs>